Hello everyone, my name is Ranjit. I'm a Director of Philanthropy here at Milton Keynes Community Foundation. The Milton Keynes Community Foundation is a philanthropic organisation which aims to support the voluntary and community and cultural sector of Milton Keynes with grant funding and other support as well. Now today we have a very special guest with us here, uh, his name is Steve Hutchings. Uh, Steve is one of our fund holders and um, I'd like to introduce you to him. Hello Steve, how are you? Uh, good morning Ranj, I'm fine thank you. Very good. I'd like to start off with a bit of an intro about you and, and your background. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, uh, where you live, um, and you know what you, what you do in your day job. Okay, well, uh, you, you calling me a very special person gives me imposter syndrome straight away. But apart from being a very special person, um, I currently work in financial services. Uh, I am in a business development role, so I'm out there looking for um, new business development clients. Typically just love music, motorsport, spending time with my family. I've got two girls, 18 and 13, and um, that's kind of my world, really. Excellent. That's great. Thank you. Um, so obviously, Steve, you're here because you are you are one of our supporters of the Community Foundation. You're also our vice president as well. So we're very grateful to you for your support. And obviously, you're, you, you've got a fund with us. I just wanted to ask you what inspired you to set up a fund with the Community Foundation? It was probably because um, uh, a previous director at the Community Foundation sat down with me over a coffee one day and we talked about um, charitable giving generally. And um, I think I realised that my charitable giving was very random. I was giving kind of lots of money to lots of different organisations, both one off and by standing order every month and things like that. And and basically, they just helped me to realise that instead of making lots of random contributions with no control, it'd be better off consolidating that into one fund and then being able con to control the giving from there. And actually, that sounded really attractive because without really thinking about it, most of the local charitable organisations and things that I support tend to be ones that the community foundation supports as well. Mm -hmm. So actually, it made a lot more sense that I could direct my giving in a much more effective way so that's really what made me decide to do it excellent yeah so yeah that makes sense doesn't it because you know um often we can give money to charities and you know there's lots of really important charities out there but if you want a sense of control in terms of knowing that your funds are utilized the way you want them to be utilized this is a, a, one of the great ways of doing it through the community foundation just just want to talk a little bit more about your intentions of support and what your fund is all about so do you just just give us a bit of an idea of your fund and in terms of you know, the kind of beneficiaries and the criteria you wanted to set and why you wanted to go for that particular criteria? For me, most of it was around the future. Um, I'm a great believer that, um, you know, the whole family should be involved. And again, with individual charitable giving, it was quite difficult for me to involve my family in everything that I was in doing. Now that we've got kind of the Hutchings family fund, we can involve the whole family, the girls can get involved and they can understand a bit more about what we're trying to do. I think as a family, our, our, our kind of passions really are underprivileged children um, and education so pretty much all children related I guess that's similar to a lot of people who have you know grown up with a young family recently you know they're the issues that you see the most and that probably you get most passionate about so the, the whole idea of the fund really was to be a long-term fund for the whole family focusing for now on on certainly education and, and underprivileged uh, children and poverty and things like that but you know the whole idea of the family being involved is that you know it can evolve it can change you know we might decide that we have bigger priorities and different priorities going forward and actually the girls I'm sure at some point might decide they want to do something very different with it so for me again it was it was about the flexibility of being able to kind of move with the times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, and obviously we do afford flexibility and, you know, things in our city do change, you know, over the years. I mean, we've been obviously reporting about child poverty through our Vital Signs report every year. And we have recently launched our latest report and it still shows that child poverty is a, is a huge issue for Milton Keynes. Uh, and not a lot of people perhaps would know that, you know. So I think it's really important that we use things like Vital Signs. Was that, was that a factor? Was, was the Vital Signs one of the factors that helped you choose um, your criteria in terms of the areas of support you wanted to do? 
I wouldn't say directly it was a factor, but certainly indirectly it was. I mean, I've been talking about setting up this fund, you know, from before Vital Signs was around. I know Vital Signs is about 10 years, 10 years on now, but at the end of the day, Vital Signs really just confirms the thinking behind the fund, seeing what the levels of poverty are. I mean, I've always said Milton Keynes is fabulously designed so much so that you know most of the people who live here don't really understand some of the poverty that there is in Milton Keynes because it's hidden behind the boulevards and the bushes and the trees so getting out there and, and understanding some of those issues and bringing it to the wider audience I think is absolutely crucial and vital science has definitely played a huge part in doing that. Yeah and of course you know when we when we hear the words philanthropy we automatically assume you know, people that are extremely wealthy, millionaires, billionaires that are uh, doing philanthropy. But of course, you know, here at the Community Foundation, we want to support people to become philanthropists at all levels. And I think, you know, you, the example of, of, of your example in terms of you started off with a small fund, you know, small donations towards it, to your fund. And now it's at the level where it's, you know, generating enough income uh, for it to give grants. And, and that's a really inspiring story, I think, for anyone out there to think about philanthropy and, you know, becoming a philanthropist in their own right. What, what was your view on all of that? And did that, you know, the, the Yacorn Fund that you set up, was that a really useful way of starting for you? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I kind of view it as like a savings plan, really, except I don't get the benefit from savings, you know, the community does. And I can't believe actually how quickly it's mounted up, but anybody will tell you, anybody who does a regular savings plan will know how quickly it all mounts up. So I've been in Milton Keynes now for, well, I've been working in Milton Keynes for 17 years, been living here for 15. I've been doing things for the local community organisations pretty much all of that time. So when you think about the amount of money that's involved and actually you put it all in one pot, it just goes to show it. It's easily done. It's mm. easily done. Yeah. So anyone that's out there that's aspiring to become a philanthropist, what would your advice be to them? <laughs> um, do it uh, would be my advice. I think there's a lot of different things about philanthropy that um, are misunderstood. Philanthropy doesn't, for a, for a first and foremost thing, um, mean it's about money. There are lots of things that people can do to help various different organisations, expertise that people have got, they can give, you know, philanthropy. I think gets um, a bit of a bad rap if uh, if you get approached somewhere you always think that people are going to ask you to make a donation you know I, I'm always able to say well actually I actually do a controlled version of giving and so therefore I know that I am supporting the causes I want to support mm. uh, through that giving and I just think taking control of it is way better than just you know the ad hoc 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds here and there. Yeah, of course, we all have to support our friends when they do the marathon and, and that type of stuff. But actually, you know, if, if you're just giving occasional bits of money to national charities, you have no idea if or what impact that makes. If you're doing something locally, you can actually see what the organisations are doing in the local community and how they're improving things. So why would you not want your money to make an impact and be able to see that? Mm. So, you know, to do something through the Community Foundation, for me, is, is the ideal way forward. The Community Foundation are the people who see the bigger picture. You know, there's so much goes on in Milton Keynes. No one individual can possibly keep up with the bigger picture. And that's what we need the Community Foundation for, to keep up with the bigger picture, know what's happening, understand where everything needs to be directed to most and when. And so for me, if you're going to do philanthropy, do it in conjunction with the Community Foundation. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. So uh, as a fund holder, then you, you talked about, you know, knowing where your funding's on. What's your experience been like working with the foundation and actually seeing where your money has been uh, has been spent? Without wishing to be too gushing, it's been it's been excellent. The Community Foundation keeps me informed all the time. The Community Foundation have, have allowed me to be involved as much as I want to be involved. The seeing is believing visits that you do where you can actually go and visit some of the organisations and see the impacts they're having. Fantastic. Um, you know, again, if I was just making the one-off contributions by standing order, it's all very impersonal and you never get to know what's on the other side. With the Community Foundation, I do. So I, I can't say a bad thing, if I'm honest. Mm. Earlier on, you said about, you know, um, your family being involved in it being the, the Hutchings Family Fund and your daughters being involved in that. How important do you think it is that we encourage the next generation 
of philanthropy and the continuation of you know, the legacies that that we potentially would leave behind for the community i think from that perspective the the next generation is kind of where my passions come from really if you, if you think about it logically as i said before if it's about child poverty disadvantaged children education things like that that's all stuff that's affecting the next generation you know, the vital signs report that's just come out shows that we've got lots and lots to do when you think about the way the pandemic has ravaged all of those areas poverty and education something like 200,000 hours of schooling missed for kids and there's the wider picture that people don't always normally see, which is things like children who are about to go out on a, a work route haven't been able to do work experience and things like that. There are no work experience opportunities. So they're not getting all of those opportunities that they would normally get. There is so much to do for the next generation. I kind of think we should be probably teaching philanthropy at a much younger age. You know, as, as you know, Ranj, I'm trying to help the Community Foundation at the moment with a forum of professionals whereby we go out into the community and we educate people on philanthropy and raise the profile of philanthropy. But I think getting in at the grassroots, you know, when we can get back into schools and talk to schools and things, I think that'll be fantastic mm -hmm. because today's youth are growing up with a much greater sense of, of things like uh, sustainability and climate change. And actually philanthropy fits into their life much more so than it probably ever did when I was a kid. But there's a lot to know, and I think the earlier we can get to them and educate them, you know, the better that the environment's going to be. So the next generation is is crucial to me, absolutely crucial. Yeah, brilliant. Thank, th thank you, Steve, for that. Well, um, it's been a really interesting conversation, Steve, and I really want to thank you from, you know, from the bottom of my heart, actually, because we've been working quite closely for the last few years now in terms of your fund, developing it and getting it to the place where you wanted it to be. And I'm really grateful to you for your support and, you know, supporting the community is so important to you. And, you know, those vital areas that you're really interested in it makes it such a big difference to the, to the community. So I want to thank you for your support. And, the, and of course, the support with the professional network as well. And we want to get philanthropy out there as much as we can and promote it and continue to support the community of Milton Keynes as the city grows, the requirements of the voluntary sector will grow as well. So Hopefully we can go philanthropy together. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you.